Because I ordered Emily? this one. Go listen really to Grandma's heart. Because when I snap back with my jaggy. Oh. Emily, what are you wearing? What is this? I wouldn't waste my shit. What's that down there? Oh, yeah. Is that a stethoscope? Yeah. Tell the camera. That's a stethoscope? Stethoscope. I'm getting discouraged with mail. Right? Say it again. So, so I became a doctor on May 10th from the University of Michigan. You become a doctor when they put a hood on your head. It's a very like medieval form of representing visual like doctorship. My father wore a lilac shirt and he put this like beautiful hood over my head. I got to wear one of the fancy gowns that has like the velvet stripes on the side. She was again, perfectly at ease with everybody's success and accomplishments. And she was very proud of the school. I couldn't stop crying. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm really pumped because I love medicine. I'm a patient of many different doctors. I think it just really um, tuned my mind into medicine, seeing the physician every three months and sort of working with different types of physicians and understanding the long-term relationship that I have with my doctors. You know, 22 years ago, she was she was four. My, you know, my husband Dan was playing softball that night, and I took went over there to, you know, talk to him and tell him. Well, I was playing softball, and it was one of these midsummer night long evenings, and uh, it was just so fun. And I looked across the diamond, and now well, here's my wife. She's approaching, and something was wrong. I could tell in her face, she was shook up. It came to the point where she was kind of noticeably, you know, a little bit sick. My younger brother, Steve, also had type 1 diabetes, so I went, I took her over to my parents' house and um, gave her a blood glucose test, and it was... She said, Dan, we tested um, Emily with... Uncle Steve's It read very high. I think it was even too high. And her to blood be sugar was over 500. So, uh, I can't remember. I think I excused myself from the game and just left. It was it was pretty devastating. Um, and at first, I, you know, this was my child, so I was. That was like being hit with a freight train. I knew from my medical training that you know, if it's high like that, trying to figure out a way that it could not be true, you know. Um, that maybe, you know, maybe it wasn't, you know, maybe, maybe it wasn't. If it's high like that, and it's not type 2 diabetes, yes. but type 1, and it's not reversible, and several complications yeah, were hurt for the Look rest of the Look at this. Here comes the knuckleball. <laughs> Phil Necro. <laughs> She's right-handed. Put it in the home plate, honey. <laughs> In the mouth. Go, go. Um, I was four years old. So when we got back from to Disney World, I remember we were sitting Indian style in uh, waiting for the parade. So we'd studied how to go through Disney World. I don't like Disney World, but how to handle it all. And there we were waiting for the stupid little Disney mouse woman to go by or Snow White or something. She goes, Dad, I have to go to the bathroom. By that time, I'd gotten kind of impatient because she had to go to the bathroom a lot. And she was skinny, skinny, skinny. Lost a lot of weight. Just stayed inside. I used to just sleep all the time and wake up and drink apple juice and go back to bed. And I just couldn't figure out why she couldn't get her act together. And I remember trying to buy her things, sweet things I thought she'd like, and I'd buy them for her. And she'd look at them and just shake her head no. And now I look back on it, realize she probably had a roaring high blood sugar. 
was already very toxic from all the sugar in her blood and Um, wow. It was hard when she was that young cause, because, you know, you as a parent are, are more responsible. Emily was just on her mind all the time. We went to the hospital and then she was admitted. And so it was, um, you know, it was, it was very difficult. It was devastating. And then they did admit, they admitted a child to the hospital mainly, mainly because you need a whole lot of education to handle it at home. And that's kind of, I, that's kind of the only way they can, you know. It was very hard to get used to. It was hard to, you know, you just really felt for this young child who all of a sudden had this great, a great amount of, um, you know, a lifelong, learning they had, that she had a lifelong chronic disease for which there isn't any cure and she would have to, you know, manage it for her whole life. And um, it was, it was really hard. <laughs> Sorry. We were discouraged, and so here she is, this kind of tired little thing in the front seat driving with me to the hospital, and I go, Emily, you've got diabetes, and you're going to have to give yourself a shot every day the rest of your life. And she said, okay. I grew to respect her so much. She's what, she's 27 years now. Uh, she still had that same attitude. Just to watch a four-year-old take that dire forecast and absorb it so easily was a huge lesson to me of how each person has extraordinary residual survival skills. Yeah, so we would go and check in, and usually there'd be, other, you know, kind of a long wait to even get in, but they, you know, Emily and I would find little things to do. We'd. Um, play a game called I Spy, where we'd, um, you know, a little guessing game where you're trying to give clues to about something in the room, just to pass the time, um, walk around. Sometimes we'd go to the vending machine and get a little treat, look at the artwork that they had displayed in the hallway. But, you know, a lot of waiting, and we'd be, you know, kind of in it together, and, uh... So mom would have to test my blood sugar every night. She had, like, a little routine where she'd come into the room and, like, shine a light in my eyes. Um, she trained all of my elementary school and middle school classes about what a low blood sugar looks like and how to do it. All my school nurses, principals. Yeah. My wife and I both dug her heels in, and in some ways um, I feel I brought something a little different than her in terms of just dogged determination and bounce back. Like, he would just tell me every day that I was, like, the best person he ever met, and that... And that we might be kicked on this, you know, but we're going to fight back real hard. 
I, I can do absolutely anything I want, absolutely amazing things. Are you a doctor, Emily? Yes? What's that hanging around your neck? Emily, what are you wearing? What is this? I wouldn't waste my shit. What's that down there? Oh, yeah. Is that a stethoscope? Tell the camera.